Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to be focusing on some of the economic effects of a currency or exchange rate depreciation. A depreciation of sterling, for example, means that the UK pound has gone down in value in the foreign exchange markets. You can see this happening if you follow the green line on this chart. Sterling depreciated by more than 20% during 2008. What that means is that uh, one pound buys less of a foreign currency. And the consequence is that uh, UK goods and services uh, being sold overseas will be cheaper when priced in foreign currencies. And foreign goods and services, in other words imports, will be more expensive when priced in domestic currency terms. So when the pound, for example, depreciates against the US dollar or against the euro, it makes the price of UK imports from those countries go up and it makes the price of our exports overseas go down. In theory, these changes in prices will bring about substitution effects or expenditure switching effects. So we might expect to see a fall or a contraction in the demand for imports and uh, hopefully an expansion in the demand for exports. Other things being the same, a depreciation of the exchange rate represents an expansion of monetary policy. In theory, it should lead to an expansion of domestic output, GDP. It could, in theory, help to improve, uh, in other words, reduce a country's trade deficit. And it could also lead to a stimulus in the total level of domestic employment. So clearly a fall in the currency can be quite important for a government in helping to achieve one or more of its macroeconomic objectives because a change in the currency affects growth, it affects inflation, unemployment and trade. Let's be clear here, if there's a fall in the currency, other things being the same, it tends to lead to an increase in inflation. And that's partly because if the currency goes down, the things we import, our imported oil, our imported foodstuffs, our imported energy will become more expensive when priced in pounds. And so that's likely to cause cost push inflation. On the other side, though, a fall in the exchange rate ought to help our trade balance. A weaker currency makes our exporting businesses more competitive in overseas markets. And if there are significant export sale increases, that ought to lead to a stronger trade balance. More a weaker currency, other things being the same, is good for growth and for jobs. A rise in exports and a fall in imports, of course, is a net injection into the circular flow. And the higher profits and the higher output and investment in export industries could kickstart and lead to an export multiplier effect in related sectors. So how do we show uh, the effects of a currency depreciation using standard ADAS diagrams? Well, let's take the first example, uh, the impact on exports. If the currency falls in value, it makes exports cheaper overseas. And depending on the elasticity of demand and other factors as well, we would expect to see aggregate demand to shift outwards from AD1 to AD2. So you can imagine, for example, how a fall in the exchange rate could be a very useful instrument of monetary policy designed to lift an economy out of a recession, for example. On the other hand, uh, a currency depreciation makes the imports, the things we have to buy in from overseas, more expensive. And that causes an inward shift of aggregate supply, shown by my diagram. So we have a double effect here. We have an outward shift of demand, AD1 to AD2, caused by rising exports but higher import costs causing a shift from AS1 to AS2. Well, overall, one could argue that a currency depreciation is expansionary for output, but it can also lead to higher inflation. Now, one of the big uh, questions is whether a fall in the currency will actually lead to an improvement in the net trade balance on the current account. Some economists are interested in the idea of a J-curve, the J-curve is a theoretical idea, which we can see sometimes for some countries, which shows the time lags between a depreciating currency and an improved trade balance. So in our diagram here, we start off with a trade deficit and we assume the currency depreciates. Initially, the trade deficit may actually get worse in the months following a depreciation. 
Uh, one factor could be that uh, import demand is inelastic and the higher price causes an increase in the total spending on imports. It also takes time for exporters to increase their sales overseas. Export businesses might adopt a wait and see attitude to see what happens to the exchange rate in a year's time. Uh, they may only go to trade fairs, for example, once or twice a year. So they may not necessarily suddenly start selling a lot of extra exports. So the trade balance in the short term may actually worsen. But hopefully, over time, uh, a weaker, a more competitive currency ought to improve the net trade position. And that's shown in my diagram. Now, for that to happen, certain conditions are needed. And we call those conditions the Marshall Lerner condition. The Marshall Lerner condition states that a depreciation or a devaluation of the exchange rate will lead to a net improvement in the trade balance provided that the sum the sum of the elasticity of demand for exports added to the elasticity of demand for imports is greater than one now you don't have to prove this in the a level exam but it's worth knowing this the marshall learner condition provided that the sum of the two elasticities of demand for exports and imports are greater than one a fall in the exchange rate ought to lead to an improved trade position. Here's a couple of examples. Let's take country A, which has very low price elasticities, both for exports and imports, the sum of which is less than 1.7. Will a fall in the currency improve the trade balance? Well, other things being the same, the answer is no. However, for country B, the demand for exports is price elastic. Demand for imports is less inelastic than country A. The sum of the elasticity is 1.9. That satisfies the Marshall learning condition. Will a fall in the currency improve the trade balance? Yes, most certainly in this case. In country C, uh, inelastic demand for exports, 0.8. Very inelastic demand for imports, 0.2. They sum to 1. Now, other things being the same, a fall in the currency will, broadly speaking, leave the balance of trade unchanged. Key revision point on the Marshall Learner condition is that if a currency depreciates, for example, if the pound falls against the euro, unless the elasticity of demand for exports is zero, in other words, there's absolutely no change in demand, then the value of the exports that we sell will almost certainly go up when the currency falls because we're converting back into, for example, pounds instead of euros. But the value of spending on imports is uncertain. And if the demand for imports is inelastic and the price goes up, your AS Micro should tell you that uh, the total spending on imports will increase. So how do we evaluate the effects of currency depreciation? Well, in theory, a depreciation of the exchange rate is good news for aggregate demand and growth. It's effectively a, an expansion of monetary policy. And indeed, many countries are actively trying to depreciate their exchange rates in a bid to stimulate economic growth. But the effects of a depreciation clearly depend on a number of variables. Uh, one can also talk, one can always talk about time lags. It takes time for consumers and businesses in both countries or more than one country affected to respond and to change their spending. The impact of a currency depreciation also depends on how open is an economy. In other words, how big is trade as a share of GDP? Relatively closed economies tend to find that an exchange rate depreciation does little for their trade balance, for example. We also have to factor in the scale of an exchange rate change. Are we talking about a 5% fall in the exchange rate, or are we talking about a 20% decline? The effects can be very different. And is the fall in the currency essentially a temporary phenomenon, likely to be reversed, or are we talking about a significant fall in the currency that might be maintained for a number of years? Uh, crucially, uh, the response of businesses is, is quite important, clearly the elasticities we've talked about. But, for example, businesses who are exporting, they may not necessarily reduce their, their price in, in overseas markets. They may choose to hold their prices constant, for example, in dollars or euros. And if the pound falls, well, that means that they just take a bigger profit margin on each unit sold. And that could often be the case when the company is looking to maximise its profits.
The impact of a, a depreciation does also depend on the, the likely multiplier and accelerator effects. Uh, hopefully a, a rise in exports will bring about uh, some, some useful multiplier impacts on, on output and employment. So look at our separate topic videos on the multiplier and the accelerator for some revision on that. And finally, the, the impact of a currency depreciation also depends on when it happens. If you're coming out of a recession, then there's likely to be plenty of spare capacity, which will allow uh, exporters to, to ramp up production, increase their sales. You get an exchange rate depreciation uh, later on in the economic cycle, when there's less spare capacity in the economy, it could be the case that exports can't really respond very much, and actually the main effect could be higher inflation. So this slide provides you with some evaluative points about the impact of a currency depreciation. We've taken you through some ADS analysis uh, and uh, we've looked at some evaluation points. So hopefully you're a little clearer on what might happen to the macro economy if there is a currency depreciation. Thanks for joining in on this one.